couple more examples involving secants and tangents. In fact, these are all just going to be integrals or both of the ones that we're gonna see in this video are both just secants. Secant to the six of x. Similar to the problem that we had with tangent to the fifth, we don't necessarily have anything that we can break off um, to immediately get the derivative, all right? So what we're gonna do is let's start, we can't break off a secant tangent, so let's just start by breaking off a secant square. Okay, so this is gonna be secant to the fourth of x, sec square x dx. Now we can rewrite that secant to the fourth as secant square square, and we saw that technique earlier with the sines and cosines. So this is sec square x square. And then we still have that other secant square on the outside there, okay? So, so now we have this sec square of x dx. Fortunately for us, secant square has a trigonometric identity, a Pythagorean identity in fact. So if we go all the way back up, we remember that secant square of x is one plus tangent square of x, all right? So that's good news. So now we get the integral of one plus tangent square of x square sec square x dx. All right, and now we're u sub ready. We know that the derivative of tangent is secant square. So let's let u be equal to the tangent of x. And our du is going to be equal to sec square x dx. Perfect. It's exactly what we need. And so now an integral in terms of u is going to be integral of 1 plus u square squared du. All right, so where we see tangent, we plug in u. Where we see the secant square x, we plug in du. We're going to foil out the 1 plus u square. Okay, again, that's not going to be 1 plus u to the fourth. All right, so we're going to foil it, and that's going to be 1 plus 2u square plus u to the fourth du. We're going to integrate term by term, and then we're going to back substitute. So this now becomes u plus two thirds u cubed. So add one, divide by three. And then finally, add one, divide by the new exponent. So that's going to be one fifth u to the fifth, because it's an indefinite integral. We have a plus c. And then finally, we back substitute, remembering that u was the tangent. So we get tan x. And carrying over from my previous videos, me and tangent being able to write on the screen, not get along. Fortunately, there's only two more I can write for this problem. So tan cube of x plus one fifth tan to the fifth of x plus c. All right. So what you're finding is a lot of these trigonometric integrals aren't difficult, um, but and they do use a lot of u substitutions but they also use a lot of these identities, okay? So as I stated before, make sure that you have these identities written down, okay? Not just these, but also you remember earlier that we had like some of these with the sines and cosines. And then also we had at the very beginning, power reducing and Pythagorean identity. So that's literally about five or six sets of identities that you should have. All right, now, one last problem that looks really innocent secant square of x, or secant cube of x, excuse me, be really easy to do with secant square, right? The problem with this one is, is that if we try to make it by breaking off a secant and then getting a tangent and then making a secant tangent, um, we're still gonna have like a one plus in there, all right? So it's not gonna work out nicely. This is a really sneakily difficult integral, all right? Which is why we saved it for the end. Let's do this, let's rewrite this as sec square x, sec x dx. And of course, predicated upon everything else that we've done in these videos, we would probably think to use the Pythagorean identity on sec square. We are not. In fact, what we are going to do is we're going to go back to our previous lesson and we're going to use integration by parts to be able to evaluate this, All right? So this is going to be Let's let u be equal to the secant of x because we know the derivative of secant. And let's let dv be equal to secant square x dx because we know the antiderivative of 
secant squared. So the derivative of sec x is going to be sec x tan x dx. And then the antiderivative of secant squared is tangent of x. Remembering our formula, integral, or I'm sorry, the integral of u dv is going to be equal to uv minus the integral of v du. And so we just multiply u and v and then v and du. So our next step is going to look like integral secant cube of x dx is equal to sec x tan x minus the integral <laughs> of tan x. And then we have a secant tangent x dx. All right, so let's actually write this. We have tangent times tangent, so that's going to be tangent square. And we have sec x, we have dx, and we have a first constant of integration. All right, now evaluating this, boy, wouldn't it be nice if this was secant times tan or uh, secant square tangent x? Unfortunately, it's not. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to rewrite this integral okay, as sec x tan x minus, and we know that the Pythagorean identity for tangent square. <laughs> excuse me, secant square of x minus one. Okay, so we go back. Remember we have our sec square x minus one for tan square. Somewhere here, here we go. So this is gonna be sec square x minus one. Then we have our sec x, we have our dx, and we have our plus c1. We're gonna distribute the secant and so now this becomes the integral of sec cube x dx. We have our sec x, we have our tan x minus the integral. We have sec squared times secant, which becomes a sec cube x dx. And then finally, we have minus a minus, and then the secant times the one. So we're going to get a plus integral of sec x dx plus c1. All right. So good news and bad news. Good news is secant x is actually one of our basic antiderivatives. Okay, it's on our list of basic antiderivatives. And if we go, sorry about that. If we look at that on Blackboard, we can go to that list. So once again, just remind you how to get there, go to Blackboard, and then we can go to our exam reviews, exam reflections, and it's the very first. All right, and it's actually going to be ln of tangent x plus secant x. But just to verify that, um, antiderivative of secant is natural log secant x tangent x, or in this case, u. All right, but we didn't use a u sub. So um, this is a valuable. That's fine. So this now becomes integral of sec cube x dx equals sec x tan x minus integral of sec cube x dx plus the natural log of the absolute value of sec x plus tan x plus, I'll just call it c2. All right, now here's the problem. We have a secant cube, all right? And that's a pretty difficult integral to evaluate. In fact, it's the original problem. So it's so difficult that it appears. But you might remember at the end of the integration by parts videos that this is one of the iterated integrals. Let's call this i, and this is negative i. Okay, so we can now rewrite our problem as i equals sec x tan x minus i, which is the original integral that we're trying to solve plus that natural log of sec x plus tan x 
plus C2. We're going to add I to both sides, or we're just going to add this I over here. We get 2I equals sec x tan x plus natural log sec x plus tan x plus c2. And then just like we've done before with iterated integrals, we're going to divide both sides by two. And finally, we wind up with our answer as one half sec x tan x plus one half natural log sec x plus tan x plus c. And if we wanted to get even fancier than that, though we don't have to, we can rewrite this as one half sec x tan x plus natural log absolute of the square root of sec x plus tan x. So we have sec x plus tan x plus c. All right, and remembering that the one half for a natural log can become the exponent. Uh, once again, I've failed penmanship. Let me try to make that look like a real secant x tangent x. This is our square root sec x plus tan x. Okay, a little bit better. Okay, and that's going to be our solution. All right, I'm sure we could try to manipulate it a little bit more if we wanted to somehow, but at that point, it's going to look no different or even uglier than we have now. All right, so that's the end of our section with um, trigonometric integrals. Key takeaways, all right, lots of u subs. Okay, um, you're going to break off powers often. All right, and then we're going to use those derivative rules, and we're also going to use our identities. Okay, so important stuff are the identities. And remembering our derivatives, okay? So derivatives of basic trig functions. All right, so those are the key takeaways from this. And hopefully this will enable you to be successful in your assignments, quizzes, and examinations.